Hello bitches! So today I'm going to be talking about a few side hustles that you can do as an artist or otherwise ways that you can make money outside of your regular day-to-day -day job and a lot of these ways I'm going to mention are pretty much low barrier to entry so they shouldn't take up too much time to learn about how to do. Everything does have a learning curve but these learning curves for these things that I'm about to mention shouldn't take at least more than a few hours of a day to learn. One of the reasons why you might need a side hustle or an alternate way of creating income as an artist is because in the animation industry or a lot of art industries, it's very project based, which means that a lot of the jobs that you do kind of just last a certain duration of time and then you might have a gap period where you're either on a hiatus or you're job hunting again. And during those times, some people still need a way to make money because let's be real, some of us have families to support, we need to feed ourselves as well, so it's helpful to have some sort of income coming along to just support yourself during those times of need. Thank you Vogue Grace, for sponsoring today's video. I will talk about them a little bit more as I dive deeper in the contents of today's video. So yeah, before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that a following is not always needed in order for you to do these things. Another way that you can get customers or some audience members for your work without developing a huge following on your own platform is going out to other platforms that might already have that traffic for you. So examples of that might be like Facebook groups on Facebook and some people also just market their stuff on Reddit where there's already a community based on different types of forums or niches that you can market your stuff to as well. And a little bit of a tip is one of the things that I found really helps with gaining customers is if you donate a portion of what you make to a certain cause or something that you really believe in and your customers might also want to help contribute to that cause while also getting one of your own products. That's one of the things that I feel like has really helped because someone will feel good about, you know, not only just purchasing something from an artist, but also being able to help a bigger cause. So the first way that's pretty much one of the easiest is posting your raw files on an online shop. And a lot of people do this on Gum Road, and they will post their raw Photoshop files, their raw animation files, their raw whatever art file it is that you create. And basically whatever niche that you are in, you can share that file for them to learn more through you or for anyone who's just interested in observing. And I find that a lot of people just like to share their raw files just because they want to share their work process to others without necessarily making a whole tutorial. And they kind of just leave it for the viewers themselves to just click through the layers or click through the different things. And it's less work from you. All you have to do is create that work that you did one time, upload it, and then others can feast on your work. So the second way, which is very similar to the first one, and you can also upload this on Gumroad or maybe even Etsy, is posting your raw sketchbook files, which is basically scanning in the things that you did for your sketchbooks or any other stray pieces of paper that you've made your art on and just scan them in, create a whole PDF of them and just share it on Gumroad or or Etsy or whatever online shop you prefer for people to do a digital download. One helpful tip with the sketchbooks that I find has benefited me is to create a theme from your sketchbooks. If you have the option to start your sketchbook from scratch and you just wanted to create a sketchbook for, you know, some passive income, you can create a sketchbook that just has a certain theme around it. You could be like, ooh, cat sketchbook, and you just draw cats in it. Or you could make it a fashion sketchbook and you just draw fashion images, or you could do a plant sketchbook or a comic sketchbook, whatever. And I feel like when there's a more cohesive theme, people are more understanding of what it is they're getting into and they just want to see a lot of variations of this one type of drawing and they're willing to download it for that reason. So I feel like creating a sketchbook with a certain theme really helps with marketing your sketchbook for others to understand what it is they're buying into. So the next way that you can produce some side income is to develop your own merch. So thank you Vograce for sponsoring today's video. If you are not familiar with Vograce, they are a manufacturing company that you can produce so many different products from. So you can make keychains, stickers, pins, standees, phone grips, 
and you can even make washi tape and plushies based on what I saw on their website. And I have many friends in the animation industry as well who have created products with Vogue Grace to sell at artist alleys and stuff like that. And they are a great place to start if you're considering where to make some of your first merch. So here, let me show you some of the examples you can make with Vogue Grace. So when I open the box, this is a sample pack that they provided me and inside this sample pack, which you can also purchase yourself, basically these products are just examples of things that you could make and for the time being they just have temporary characters that they used on all these different products and basically by looking at these different products you can see what you could be making but instead of you know Vograce's mascot you can put your own character sell them on different platforms and you can also make stickers which come in this little pack so here are some examples of the charms or keychains that you can make with Vograce and if you look closely there are different shapes or different colors that you can make the chains with. Some of them are a little bit more beveled or raised on the top and some of them are just flat simple clear ones and some of them just have like these sparkle glittery reflections on it. I have actually done one of these before as well and they seem like a very popular thing that people want to buy and I sold out on them so if you're considering making charms Vogue Grace is definitely a good option. And some of the other things that you can make outside of pins and charms are washi tape. You can also make your own phone grip or a little cute pop socket that you can just attach to the back of your phone with your own character on it. And you can also make these buttons which come in these two different finishings. You can see this one has more of a sparkle to it. These are just some really cool ideas if you want to think of something outside of the box. So this is a charm, okay? It's like a keychain charm, but guess what? You can make it a little game to try to get them into the bottom here. So I don't know, it would just be fun to have this on the back of your backpack or something. And I just think it's so cute. And then another thing that I think is a really fun charm idea is you can have your character or some sort of mascot inside this little candy-like wrapper or something like that. And it actually has air inside. So it's like a little pillow. This is an acrylic stand and you can basically pop the character out, pop the stand out, and then place them on it. Now you just have a character on a stand. But guess what? All of these things I showed are not the only things that you can create. And there are so many other things that you can create on their website. All you have to do is just create the drawing or illustration that you want on one of these products. And you just upload the file, choose the quantity that you want. And then after you buy them, of course, you can then resell them on your own shops or an artist alley or just anywhere where you feel like you want to sell your work. If you want to check out Vograce and see other things that you can create, on their website from again charms pins stickers whatever it is your heart desires check out the link in the description box below and you can start creating things that you can sell so then next another one-time draw one-time upload type of thing that you can create are brush packs I personally have never made a brush pack before, but I have definitely downloaded many people's brush packs. So I can just tell you now as a customer that I do value buying brush packs because I don't wanna make them myself and I just feel like, you know, to each their own, making brush packs isn't really my type of thing. So if you wanna make a brush pack, you don't have to just make, you know, a brush that someone can use. You can also make drawings that people can use for their work, but of course, know that if you're going to create a brush pack that has your drawing that someone else can use, that can open up to the world of art theft or people just using your copyrighted work if you do plan to copyright. So you might have to consider your rights in that regard. However, if you do want to just make a brush pack just to sell for this person to use for whatever they want to. So for example, a long time ago when I was working as a storyboard revisionist, I had to create reindeer for an episode of Trash Truck, which was the Christmas special, which is now on Netflix for anyone who's interested in seeing something Christmas related, because if you couldn't tell in the background, it is Christmas time. Basically, I had to draw reindeer a lot of times for many of the storyboards. And I was just like, I just can't draw reindeer like that often if I want to get this stuff done. So basically, what what I did was I would make a reindeer in all of its rotational poses. I would draw like eight poses of one reindeer and create eight brushes out of those eight poses of reindeer that I made. And instead of having to draw a reindeer again every time in every storyboard, well guess what? I just made one reindeer one time for all of those eight poses and boop 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 boop. I booped that 
on every new file without having to draw a reindeer again. And I love deer, they are one of my favorite animals. However, I will say that they are pretty complicated to draw. So if there is something that you are really good at drawing and you feel like other people might struggle with it, especially with like cars, buildings, things that require some sort of repetition in the backgrounds of drawings, well, if you create that type of drawing that people can use to just stamp into their work easily to communicate an illustration or a doodle, well, there you go. Maybe you should start making brush packs of things that people can use in their backgrounds of drawings. Another idea of things that you can create to sell, to create your own side income, is to do commissions or prints. And something that could probably really help with your workflow, especially if, for example, you already drew something for a merch product, but that illustration can still be usable for other things. Like, what if someone wants that drawing that you did on this character, but on a print instead? Well, you can sell prints on your Etsy shop or whatever storefront once again. And another thing that you can do is also commissions. So this one, you would have to draw a new thing every time, which is the only thing that could be time consuming if that's not really what you were planning for. But if you can't do commissions throughout the whole year, one of the things I would recommend for you to do is maybe target the holiday seasons because that's when people are thinking of gifts for things to buy for their loved ones and sometimes a commission of a portrait of them, you know, a couple or their pets. Pets sell, let me tell you that. So let's just say you can only do 10 drawings throughout a month so you can post 10 slots for 10 commissions and once you reach your max of 10 commissions that you agree to do throughout this month, then, you know, after your 10 slots are filled, you close off the commissions until they open again. So this is a good way of managing your time and kind of knowing how much money you will make within a certain time period. So doing commissions is a great idea, but if you cannot do it like all the time, maybe just do it right before the holidays or just, you know, things that, you know, people will be looking for gifts for people for. So one of the next ways that you can produce some side income, especially if you're like a comic artist or something like that, is you can self-publish your own books or zines and they're different sites that you can check out where you can self-publish your own books. But if you also just want to do something similar to the sketchbook idea that I mentioned earlier, but instead of creating a gum road for just scanned files that you can download, and let's say you want to sell something physical, you can also make a physical copy of your sketchbook through self-published books or zines and just sell them at an artist alley or somewhere physical, or if you just want to ship it out to people, that is possible as well. So this is more of an option for if you have a collection of different types of artwork that you want to sell to people, and this can also include comics or if you just want to publish your own little storybook, well, great, you have a fun little idea for people. And then lastly, I would say that this has a little bit of a higher barrier to entry just because I feel like in order to do this, you should have worked in a certain field, but it's kind of hosting a consultation or portfolio review for people who want that advice or knowledge. And I believe if you work in the animation industry, it's more difficult for you to really give portfolio reviews to students because I know there are some studios that don't want you to do that for in search legal reasons that I myself am not totally like informed about either but if you are not currently employed by anyone then I don't see the harm in doing so so if you are a professional in a certain field and let's say you work in the animation industry and you know a lot of stuff about storyboarding but you don't have the time to host your own class or course but you do want to still be able to spread the knowledge to someone then you can maybe host a consultation where you again similar to commissions you have a slot of certain consultations you can do throughout a month and then you get some people who are interested in you know having a consultation with you and you can give them advice guide them through their work or just give them advice to again get through their career or get into a certain career field or you can look through their work and give them advice on what they can do to improve and again I really only think that this might be better for if you have had some time working in a field for a long time or if you've had experience in a field because it might be a little bit questionable if you say you have a lot of knowledge in this certain industry without necessarily having dipped your toes in it or really knowing what it is, it could be kind of misleading to people who are purchasing your consultation. So those are some of the side hustles that you can literally start doing right now, whether it just be uploading your art file online now and creating something out of it or creating a posting to let people know that you are selling this course, commission, print, whatever it is that you are selling. So 
Again, you do not need a lot of followers in order to do this. If you don't have a lot of followers, but you feel like you need the traffic, then you can literally go on Facebook or some sort of online forum like Reddit, find the community that you are a part of. And again, even though the things I mentioned right now are things that are more for side hustles, they can definitely become a full-time business if that is something you want to do. And maybe the things I mentioned now are just the seeds to begin that. So yeah, anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you all have a great holiday season and I will see you all in the next one. So peace out and stay ho some dishes.